shall i start yes sir yes to okay. good afternoon good afternoon everybody welcome to the webinar on 3d printing and additive manufacturing organized by center for robotics and 3d printing on macau wb today we have our honorable vice chancellor sir professor dr shoykot moitro with us we have our hod and director of director school of engineering sciences professor dr shivamoy dasgupta sir and dr manjaya m from nit warangal nit warangal with us to uh, as an expert on this topic so as we know the 3d printing or additive manufacturing is simply the designing of a 3d model from a computer aided design so if we go back to the history of 3d printing or additive manufacturing we have uh, we get back to some story by uh, mare lenstar in 1945 called things pass by that is the first time when uh, in science fiction 3d printing or additive manufacturing came into being after that almost after 26 years the first 3d printer was patented and from that journey till in, in the 2000 in the 2020s or in the 2020s uh, i hospital murfield i hospital in london successfully uh, designed a 3d printed prosthetic eye which was in, which was then put into a patient and in a, in a, in a successful surgery so further add on i will request our honorable vice chancellor sir to start the proceedings today sir over to you thank you very much from the first time probably Uh, from this department uh, we are organizing from the centers of uh, uh, robotics and 3d printing we are organizing an webinars on additive manufacturing and uh, this this is uh, what uh, i was uh, requesting and advising to our faculty members and uh, ultimately that you are doing these things it's uh, it brings a lot of joy for me this uh, additive manufacturing is one of the thing which is going to revolutionize the entire world particularly as far as the engineering practices manufacturing practices is concerned within the shortest possible time in coming days just the process which now uh, being followed worldwide industry 4.0 where robotics automation uh, remote work process are the major features is going to uh, assume another format that is industry 5.0 where the primary you know this focus will be personalization and customization and for that purpose additive manufacturing 3d printing these are coming uh, in a big way to change the perception of the manufacturing process significantly tremendously bringing disruptions in the existing practices across the entire globe and here what we are seeing that already in different areas different sectors people have started using additive manufacturing as the uh, manufacturing process still uh, it is uh, in nascent stage and formative stage in a country like us and we have uh, we have lots of coverage uh, of, of this uh, fascinating technology and we need to uh, develop uh, large numbers of skilled manpowers competent enough to handle this technology of the future and uh, the industry concept is uh, like this in uh, in the near future it, it will be you know this mostly personalized product or customized products and at the same time is ubiquitous products and uh, different sorts of products starting from small items to you know these big articles even uh, cars and houses or uh, have the potential to uh, get fabricated or manufactured by applying this additive manufacturing on 3d 3d printing process and we have seen certain examples in other countries and other places in this direction in pharmaceuticals also customized polypill or customized medicine these are being manufactured using 3d printing and these are uh, uh, and these all these things are uh, bringing more and more you know this uh, efficacy of the systems uh, making it more useful and conducive for our usage for our consumption and for our uh, personal well being now but uh, we need to develop more awareness and sensitizations of this uh, 
futuristic technology amongst our young minds. Because till now, uh, by and large, the importance uh, of this 3D manufacturing and additive manufacturing, 3D printing and additive manufacturing system is uh, uh, absent or not that much present across the entire professional world in, uh, as far as our, our country is concerned. Why, but uh, what we want that in coming days, we want to develop a numbers of uh, micro entrepreneurs, skill-based entrepreneurs and knowledge-based entrepreneurs who uh, they can work uh, applying their innovative skill, you know, imaginative mindset to uh, design products, to take care of the challenges present uh, right now and to develop solution for the futures. And that is possible if we can engage them in uh, these types of uh, manufacturing uh, uh, practices or the, or, the, or the technologies of the future. By 2030, by 2040, 2030, we'll, uh, we'll be seeing a number of changes are happening in our uh, manufacturing sector, industrial sectors. By 2050, we will be entering uh, uh, the generation of uh, the next generation of learning community of present. They will be entering to uh, and enter, you know, these uh, different kinds of world. And therefore, this is very important in the coming, you know, these uh, five, 10 years, we need to, uh, empower our learning community our learning community that is next generation professionals with the latest skill latest technology innovative techniques innovative effort, and with the building of capacity of applying their innovative mindset and imaginative mindset so this uh, for this purpose uh, we need to focus more and more on all these activities we need a good network and collaboration because um, we have uh, experts available uh, in a scattered manner in this country, we need to have a good network amongst all of us so that uh, the mandate of empowering a large numbers of uh, next generation professionals can be fulfilled. And this is not the mandate of our university only, this is mandate of this country. That by, by that uh, work only, by that process, we can change the entire economic situation and that is required now. We need to uh, well, improve our entire economic propositions of this country, what is existing right now, to uh, bring more comfort, comfortable life for all these uh, citizens of this country, of the of the all the uh, all the Indians, and at the same time, as a global citizen, also we want to change the conditions of the globe as well, and uh, more and more we can. Uh, bring professionals to share their knowledge and expertise for the benefits of our learning community. It is better for all of us. And this should be a sustainable effort. It is not like that, uh, that uh, we are organizing webinars and after that, uh, it, uh, there is no follow-up and we are not continuing these practices. Maybe it, uh, this, uh, this is one of the uh, important uh, Another this applications of digital platforms or connecting uh, experts situated at remote corners with us, but under and unless we are not bringing some physical, you know, this uh, presence of all these uh, experts and you know these uh, technologists with us, then uh, it will not create that much interest and uh, inspirations and motivations among our student community. So uh, maybe you can uh, you can think of organizing some physical formats uh, where, whereby uh, 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 some sorts of uh, physical interactions amongst this, uh, uh, the, with the resource persons with uh, the learning community is becoming more and more engaging and lively uh, for, for, for better sensitization, better awareness, better understanding of the subject. Till now, uh, whatever we are doing through digital platform, let us take maximum benefit out of it. We ad I advise to everyone uh, to uh, uh, interact with uh, the resource persons which present about today uh, as much as possible. Develop your own perceptions and understanding, and maybe in near future uh, you may be advised to uh, present your views and opinions. How best you have uh, you know this grab this particular concept, and uh, we can create. We have created a facility. We want to upgrade the facility further. We are in the process of networking with many industrial organizations locally and nationally uh, so that uh, this uh, all the facilities uh, become state of the art and in near future it can be considered as a center of excellence in this particular uh, you know this area so 
my advice to all of you kindly work relentlessly in a seamless fashion to achieve this goal and mandate of this university i wish all the best for the success of today's webinar i expect that everyone will have an enjoyable learning period during the course of this webinars and um, again uh, with the my sincere thanks to the resource persons dr moha manai uh, um, manjaya whether i have spelled it correctly or not uh, and uh, but to the organizer of these webinars the faculty members from the department of engineering science professor das gupta and his entire team for this purpose best to us to to the uh, participants who are present over here thank you very much thank you sir for your valuable words it was a enlightening speech from you about the need of the need for economy and production scenario of the of the nation and future and also for the uh, for the budding engineers to come along thank you sir again now we'll go on to Do professor dr shivmoy dasgupto head of the department center for robotics and 3d printing macau wb sir please thank you uh, shambhu uh, ma, uh, with due respect to our honorable vice chancellor sir and uh, i mean our invited speaker today and all of our faculty colleagues and of course all the viewers today it's uh, as our honorable vice chancellor said and this is a very important one and uh, for the for the center of uh, 3d uh, robotics and 3d printing this is also important that in 3 on 3d printing this is the first uh, webinar we are holding and as our honorable vice chancellor ex uh, explained that it is not only the mandate of our university it is also the mandate of the nation that we should, as a whole we should um, go into this 3d printing and 3d printing is now used uh, not only for Nor I think uh, factory I think manufacturing matter manufacturing of material uh, objects which are used inanimate objects but it is also uh, being used for uh, biological systems actually manufacturing different limbs or human limbs and all that although there are uh, issues and there are some problems which are being solved but even then the thing has started. and in our country and in our university we have some facility that that is mostly uh, usage of uh, 3d printers uh, but we have to go for that uh, you know this how exactly we can make 3d printers we can develop 3d printers and we can catch up the waste uh, in terms of our development and expertise and uh, you know they have been trying for a long time when i was So forty years back, when I was a student, that time three D printers actually they we, I uh, used to hear few three D printers are being uh, made in the laboratory and ex they were experimenting on that. But now uh, they have it. Are those things have come commercially? But we have to catch up those things. We are not yet having having a system that where three D printers or research on three D printers are being additive manufacturing is being done uh, in a very big way. in our universities and institutions okay and even in industry so uh, that is also another issue and i think with this, this is webinar this webinar is a starting and we will get lot of inputs from dr manjaya and uh, dr manjaya from dr manjaya we have also expectation that he, he will be with us uh, i mean as uh, you know um, i mean research and development associates uh for that uh, i think i think we will be able, uh, we can go further and so this is the starting point and uh, uh, even within, in his uh, presentation i am sure that we will get enlightened about the 3d printing and additive manufacturing uh, i think systems and uh, the present status and future uh, course of development and we can uh, go along with the, uh, him as our uh, co researcher and co developer and also as our honorable vice chancellor mentioned that we have lot of experts but they are very much scattered so this is also our uh, i mean mandatory task to bring all of them together uh, in our university uh, platform and forum so that uh, we, all of us can get benefited and uh, uh, to viewers all the viewers actually i have uh, request that kindly follow uh, the uh, i think deliberation of Dr. Manjaya, and ask all relevant questions so that uh, you get aware and you, you also join us 
we in the process of developing and doing research in additive manufacturing. With that, thanking all the organizers in, I mean, of our Philippine Robotics and Philippine Department, uh, I'm uh, closing my, uh, I think, here are these uh, words. So, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your yeah. speech about the importance and, and the lineup uh, we, which were planned to work for the development of university and our and students. Now it's time for the our key speaker, Dr. Manjaya M. Before I go on to him, I would like to give a brief introduction of a, such a learned person. Dr. Manjaya M is now working as assistant professor at, in mechanical engineering department at NIT Warangal. He has done his PhD from NIT Karnataka and his postdoc from University of Johannesburg, Job, uh, Johannesburg South Africa. He has all, he's all, he already have more than 30, more than 37 international international conferences and have also authored several books. He is also a technical advisor to a number of committees at an international level. It's our proud privilege to have him as a, as a keynote speaker in this event today with us. Welcome, Dr. Dr. Manjaya. Thank you for making time out of your busy schedule for us. So now over to you for the yeah, enlightening journey on additive manufacturing and 3D printing. So. Thank you, Dr. Shambhu uh, Chatterjee, for giving a nice introduction about me. And I would good afternoon to all the vice chancellor and as well as dean and as well as director and head of the department and as well as faculties and as participants of this FDP session. A very good afternoon to all of you. And in the today's session, I'm going to uh, give about the, the overview of this manufacturing process and what all the recent developments has been taken place in this manufacturing process. And also with respect to the case studies, what recent development we have worked in this research aspect with respect to the IT manufacturing, especially for the metal IT manufacturing, I'm going to speak about more on the metal aspects. Because when we are talk about the aerospace, medical, as well as automobile application, the most of the things we are using the metal are the alloys or some of the ceramic metals. With respect to these aspects, I'm going to talk about in this uh, today's session. Okay, I'm welcoming all of you once again. And in the today's session, the additive manufacturing and 3D printing, as you are aware that uh, you are many of you are the faculty members and as well as your vice chancellor and the head of the department have given the, the insights of this the 3D printing or the IT manufacturing process. You are already known that the, the IT manufacturing or the 3D printing is a method or the manufacturing process to create the three-dimensional object by layer by layer the deposition with the help of the computer created design means with the help of the CAD file that is with the whatever we are taking the file from the how the modeling has been taken place and then we are transferring that the model file into a number of layers by slicing with the different uh, number of layers depending on the layer thickness what we define and all and then we are giving the different type of the hatching strategy that is the deposition strategies and all the tool path strategies then we are converting that the whatever the defined file it is STL file format. That is the standard triangle language file format. That we are feeding into the system, and then the system is going to understand what the program has been developed. Then it is going to deposit the layers by layers manufacturing of the components until it is going to be the component is going to be fabricated. This is entirely opposite to the subject manufacturing process where we are having a final design is going to cut from a larger blocks of the materials and all by removing the materials to get the create the design or to get the material. In there we are having a lot of material wastage will be there but in this uh, 3d printing or in the written manufacturing process it is a very perfectly well suited for creating very customized and complex parts where we are having a very quicker developing the rapid prototypes. Yes, the, we need to have the prototypes in a very a shorter duration or very quick manner. There we can go to use of this the anti-manufacturing process. 
and also wherever we required like the complex parts and as well as the customized parts there this is very the perfectly suitable process manufacturing process and it may overcome some of the conventional manufacturing process and it may replace some of the conventional manufacturing process for a customization wherever we need to have this customization it's going to completely uh, eliminate the process of a conventional manufacturing process and if you see here the from the design part to the real part if you see here we are having here the some of the design part here that is theoretically what we are designing from the cad model or any modeling tools we are having wide availability of the modeling tools With that we will design any component and then we will define the manufacturing path generation that is the the deposition strategies or we can say the hatching strategies the and then we define the number of layers how many number of layers has to be required for fabricating these components then we are transferring that file into the machine that is the manufacturing process then ultimately we are going to have the manufactured part we think that or we assume that the whatever the component is made by this 3d printing or the manufacturing process it is like a near net shape manufactured component yes it is a near net shape manufactured component but for certain applications when you are talking about the materials with respect to the metals and alloys some of the components are thermally and residually stressed and some profiles are not up to the mark what we are going to use for a particular application it is distorted surface profiles we need to have some of the finished parts like the post processing is required for these kind of the components and all if you see here to have from scratch to the real part from the design from the conceptualization to the real part these are all the steps involved in this the additive manufacturing process are in the depending in this we can use the heat source displacement and as the well feed stock even this additive manufacturing is categorized based on this ASTM the 52 standard and as well as ASTM 591200 standard how this the categories has been made and as well as what is the terminology we have to use for the defining this manufacturing process of this additive manufacturing even in this uh, the different types are there you can see the steel integrity process bind jetting extrusion based additive manufacturing process material jetting powder bed fusion additive manufacturing direct energy deposition as ultrasonic consolidation process fused deposition modeling direct uh, that is digital laser printing and as well as electron beam additive manufacturing process there are the different types of categories of this uh, the 3d printing process it can be used for the both metals and as well as polymers and plastic materials even ceramics and metal products composite materials also. if you see what kind of heat source we can use especially with respect to the metallic additive manufacturing process we can go with laser or we can go with the electron beam as usually we can go with the arc that is a like tick arc with the make even we can go with the plasma this kind of the different the heat sources can be used to to as a energy sources to melt the materials or to sinter the materials and in that we can go with the displacement that is with the gantry type or with the robotic arm or with the mixed type of robotic and gantry we can use for the displacement and we went with the feedstock materials we can go with the wire as a feedstock materials as well as powder and the ribbon materials these kind of the uh, different the powder materials can be used the feedstock materials and in that there are different kind of process parameters in any kind of the additive manufacturing process the laser beam what kind of beam diameter we use that is the diameter of the laser the scan velocity that is the scan speed and the powder feed rate as well as the shielding gas and how much the powder and the material size in during the solidification and melting to get the required gauge structures 
and some of the post processing techniques that is like the hot as static processing the heating process and heat treatment stress relieving and machining and laser polish these are all it may be required to remove some of the supporting structures or it may be required to go for the post processing to achieve the required accuracy and the, the finishing of the component surface finish and all this is the steps and the overview of this uh, the head manufacturing process and many of you as talk about alt manufacturing is a very big deal why it is a big deal because we are having the wider availability of the cad cam software we are having n number of the, the modeling and designing software and improvement in the automation and as well as component technologies lot of developments and improvements have been taken place in the automation and as well as in the component technologies and as well as with respect to the growing library of the printable materials means when it was started in 1980s it was started with the polymer materials that is the curable polymer materials and as well as the plastic materials and now later 1990s and or 94 we have started with the metallic materials with only the stainless steel and aluminum and some of the the weldable materials now we are having the more amount of the printable materials the library of this printable materials is growing day by day and all and the major industry and the government investment means majorly the industries are investing lot of money into developing this the process to make a commercialization and as well as the government is investing lot of funds to make this process more feasible and all there is also another the process of investments in the government and as well as from the industry center and as well as freedom to operate enabled by this patent expirations means whatever the patents were there in the 1980s when it was started with this sla process this digital lithography process fdm process there are a lot of patents was there that is how it is melting is taking place and how the strategies we are developing how the solid case and technologies that is curing and all there are patents are expired and now we are having easy to get that patents and we can develop our own systems to make the dd printing process and all and with the help of this process to get and all and with this. so many freely available software to define the two pass strategies and as well as the slicing strategies all these free uh, the software available to the help of these we can able to develop our own system to make the simple uh, table type dd printing machines for the initial demonstration purpose as well as for the simple uh, structures can be made with this polymers and as well as the plastic materials and as well as the momentum confidence and the creative vision of this dd printing systems and the fast prototyping means very very rapid prototyping can be developed with this kind of the head manufacturing process means we are having none other than like the conventional manufacturing process to make the prototypes it's very highly difficult or really impossible but with the help of these 3d printing machines we can able to produce very fast prototyping which is required for the demonstration purpose in the medical aspects or in the casting industries or it may be in the the marketing purpose also these kind of the the fast prototyping can be done in this the edge manufacturing other trade building process and as well as the complex geometries like whatever may be the complexities we can able to build the components with the help of this uh, the process the, any kind of complexity can easily there is no constraints in its complexity center whatever you imagine you can able to build or you can able to fabricate such components with the help of this head manufacturing process and multi materials that is the new materials functional grade materials and lot of bimetallic materials can be made with this am process and enhance the performance and as well as the low volume manufacturing that is the personalized manufacturing means we are having very personalized components the patient specific components are required in the biomedical aspects that is personalization where it is required in the the medical aspects that is very much useful with this 
detailed printing process wherever it is required this personalization and all if you see here the one the application example here very recent applications as i am showing here the posh car it is a f1 race car the pistol head of this the posh car sports vehicle it was printed by this uh, the 3d printing that is one of the cold bed fusion and manufacturing process earlier this piston head was manufactured by this forging process and with the help of this the cold bed fusion process we are having an opportunity that it can improve its performance and it was as well as it gains more the 30 hours power and as well as the weighter means the weight of this component is very much lighter compared to that of the, the forged component means we are having an opportunity to fabricate the components with lighter and as well as it can improve its performance by improving the 30 hours power and this was made with very recently in 2021 with the trump laser and this is the leap uh, g leap laser jet uh, tip you might be aware that this this is already implemented in many of the, the aircraft or air buses and the, the aircraft engines and all means this is the tip was fabricated on the single uh, manufacturing process with their of this 3d printing process means If you want to make or manufacture these kind of the the nozzle tip, fuel nozzle tip in the conventional manufacturing process, it consisting of there are twenty four number of assembly parts. So that may be welded or assembled by this uh, the fastening process and or or any other process, casted or forged. And see, to make as a single component with the conventional manufacturing process is highly impossible. It's very very difficult or very challenging. task to make as a single component and it takes even months together to manufacture with the conventional manufacturing process with the help of the uh, casting machining or any other kind of early process but because of the availability of this advanced three printing process you can able to manufacture these type of the nozzle tip in a single component and as well as with very very less lead time that is the Weak time you can able to manufacture these kind of components in the trade printing process, in the photo bed fusion process. And G has already patented these components and all the aircraft and all. This is one of the most the example. And if you see the very recently the Chinese aerospace uh, industry, they are trying to develop this the the missiles, the cruise missiles. it can be able to manufacture with this the at manufacturing technology to speed up the design and as well as production of this kind of the missile center this is the the aerospace company of the chinese they have developed the making speed up of these things and even in the medicines even in the medical aspects uh, the recently the i was printed and implemented into the patient specific kind of and also this kind of medicines are printed by this the repeating process in very very less time of that is in the only in the 7 seconds you can able to print these kind of the 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 medicines and this was uh, done by this university college of london this was team and working on this repeating of medicines and even with the some of the medical applications livers and some of the kidney even the human brain some of the functional human brain is very in the last century in newspaper i saw that the functional micro the brains was printed or the heart uh, things the was printed with this printing with the the bio printing aspects in the kind of the developments has been taking place in these aspects in the medical aspects even with why the aim is benefits where it is benefits and when we have to go with the aid manufacturing process and depending on what the requirement we have to choose whether it may be complexity or the number of components is more or it may be the 
the cost of production. If you see here, one example is the cooling channel, the conventional cooling channel, and as well as the 3D printed cooling channel. So see it both have assembled and as well as the made some movement or simulation to analyze the temperature distribution. Because you see entirely we can able to redesign the companies. If you want to make conventional manufacturing, we have to go for the machining. Is the make the slots and then take the blocks and then machine and then to assemble the different kind of the process. That having this much of the temperature distribution in this kind of a conventionally machine cooling channels and all but if you want to go with the really topologically optimized 3d redesigned components with the 3d printed component the entire the thermal distributions can be reduced because of the redesigning and as well as free to fabricate as a single component this will because of the this 3D printing process enables this manufacturing of the new geometry shapes that are not possible with the conventional manufacturing. Like this is one example, A makes it is possible to redesign advanced cooling channels that pulls the tools and as well as the components better and therefore reduce the cycle time and all. That's where we can get the benefits of this 3D printing process. And if you see in the right hand side, uh, the cost versus the complexity. The ultimate manufacturing process, the cost of the production, cost of manufacturing is completely constant. Whatever may be the components, whether the single components or the n number of components, and as well as the, the complexity. If the complexity is less or if the complexity is more. Whatever may be the complexity, the components cost of manufacturing will be the same in the head manufacturing process. But when you talk about the conventional manufacturing process. If complexity is very less, then cost of production is less. Once it is uh, reaching the highly complex, complexity is keep on growing, then it's the cost of production is increasing because it has to include so many number of the manufacturing process to make that much complexity in that. and as well as the material cost. Means in this edge manufacturing process, whatever may be the complexity, it is free to design and free to manufacture with a less number of costs. Especially when in the patient specific. See one example here, it is the customization where it is required. Customization is required in the case of the medical aspects, like the dental crowns, bridges, and even in the patient's loss of the, some of the skulls or some of the the jaws and all because of the trauma patients or some of the, the diseased patients, there it is very much required the customization. If you see here, the, these type of the crowns are manufacturing takes a lot of time for with respect to the patient specifics. And the geometry has been scanned, taken from the CT scanning or with the laser scanning, it was processed with the CAT CAM modeling software and all. Even more than 30 million crowns or copings or bridges have been already printed with A machines for the last six years. Even day to day, the requirement of this depending crowns in medical aspects, the market share and the market size is growing. As the expert estimate that more than 10,000 copings are produced every day with the help of this A machines. And this is the very, very fastest production time and like the fastest production process, especially where it is required for the customization. See, the one A machine can produce 450 crowns per day, but while the dental technician can make only around 40, wherever we need to have this customization, it can produce only the 40 components from the technicians. But with the AM process, we can make 50 crowns per day. That is where we customization with increased production rates can be done with this kind of the, the customization process. And even with the the LT manufacturing offers many of the advantages, regardless of the manufacturing time, the geometric fitness, and as well as the materials. Like this is one example is the skull implant, which is modified with surface structures. Means 
lot of the modifications are required. The facial specific, the skull design, the the trauma patients or cancer patients, they need these kind of the the implants to improve their lifestyle and get better curing the faster duration of the time and up. And this improved fit via this AM process based on the 3D scan data with the CT scanning or X-ray scanning as well as with the laser scanning. The resulting implants of the fits, which is perfectly fit into the skull cap and it leads for faster recovery and as well as reduced operation time. Because of creating so many lattice structures and as well as porous structures, that is helpful for growing the, uh, the bone and as well as the bacteria and as well as the cells. And all. This will help in the faster recovery stage of the patient. And if you see the IT manufacturing, we may replace the conventional manufacturing methods for the customized products. It's definitely, it is going to replace for the customization products with the conventional manufacturing process. And if you see the materials which are under investigation with these AD manufacturing process of the 3D printing, especially for the, the metallic materials are the alloys and all. Start from aluminum to the super alloys or astral alloys. Many of the researchers, including our research groups have done so many works in this, uh, uh, the printing these kind of the materials and then characterizing with respect to the required the properties when you comparing with the raw alloys or the conventional forged alloys. And if you see the anti manufacturing of metals, wherever it is required, you can see the applications, the knee implants, the functional surface patterns are required that is patented by this, the Lima Corporation in the healthcare applications. And so of the internal cooling channels, the conformal cooling channels from this GE, and as well as the, uh, the injectors, the nozzle injector central, and so of the topologically optimized brackets, means to minimize the materials and to make it lighter and all. And as well as this leak fuel nozzle tip, the this is the monolithic components made by this. G and up, and the lightweight structures wherever it is required for the aerospace and medical applications, the porous structures that is made by this lot of the developments has been taken place. The applications you see the IT manufacturing of metals that is going to produce the metal parts with the innovative characteristics which cannot be get it from the conventional manufacturing process in terms of the shapes or surface properties or it may be the internal structures or it may be overall value chain. You can be able to get the innovative characteristics of any components which are made by this AM process. This AM process is for metals, it is like a welding or a sintering process. And several uh, the different processes for the metals are existing in this AM process like board feed technology that is the direct metal deposition and direct energy deposition. You can, you can call it as a laser engineered net shape lens process, laser metal deposition process. And the another one is wire arc rate manufacturing process, WAM process. And the other one is the port bed that is the PBF process, port bed fusion rate manufacturing process becomes the laser selective laser sintering, selective laser melting process and as well as the electron beam melting light manufacturing process. These are the most common techniques which is used for the, the metal light manufacturing process. Even the binders that you can use, especially used for the many of the casting modes or patterns can be done with this binders that process. And if you see how this DED works, what is the mechanisms and the, how the direct metal deposition process works. This direct energy deposition process are used primarily to add the features onto an existing structures or existing component, or to adding some of the strengthening the ribs on the plates, or it may be used to manufacture the complete new components, or you can be able to repair the damaged or worn out parts also. This is what we can use 
this direct metal deposition process and dd production process it is going to melt the metals to form the melt pool which is formed on the metallic substrate with the help of the laser beam and which is the powder fed by this the coaxial nozzle, nozzle directly onto the melt pool and powder melts to form the deposit that is fusion bonded to the substrate and all and most of the systems with this DD systems will be up the core axis or pi axis systems and as well as the robotic arm which is positioned to the deposition head and all so that the process is not limited to the the successive horizontal layers as well as it can be built even the vertical layers even complex inclined angles the layers can be fabricated with these kind of the the head manufacturing process with the DD and all. When you are talking about or uh, discussing about, there is a less complexity is there in this kind of the IT manufacturing process, uh, like a powder bed fusion process. Because when you talk about the freedom, when you are high, highly complex in such cases, the design freedom or fabrication freedom is less when you compare with the powder bed fusion process. And as well as post deposition treatments may be required depending on the applications. Okay. And the final machining is required to achieve the right geometrical tolerance system. That is the post processing machining is required to achieve the right geometrical tolerance system. And if you see here, it is represented uh, the process, the DED process, and as well as the quad application. This is one the trump laser the head manufacturing process and how this the, the beam process that is the concept laser how the powder feeding takes place in the melt pool and form the, the layer beads. You see with respect to the process most of the head manufacturing process especially the metallic uh, the parts which are printed by this metal head manufacturing process either the DD process DBM process, WAM process, or SLM process. Based on the production rate and as well as the complexity and the precise of the state manufacturing parts. See, WAM process or the DD process is very, very the fastest process which can able to fabricate the highly complex parts, even 9 kg per hour, and as well as even with the, the 2 kg power with the powder bed, like powder deposition. That is the powder feeding, that is with the direct energy deposition process, lens or DDR, laser, the concept. With the help of this, the powder bed fusion process, the complexity, whatever the more complex, you can go with the powder bed fusion process, best complexity. And as well as with the precise components, with the, you can go with the SLM process or with the EBM process from the RCAM and all. But the rate of production is less, that is only 0.1 to 0.3 kg per hour. The production rate is very, very less. But we are having high precision and as well as the complexity is more than you can go with these kind of technologies. You see here how this uh, the direct uh, the energy deposition process works, that is from the concept laser, the beam technology. And see from the deposition head. The laser uh, comes from the central axis and the powder feeding through this uh, coaxial feeding nozzles. And there it is interacting with the laser in the bright mode and then deposition is takes place as a multiple. This is how the layer by layer deposition is taking place in the direct energy deposition systems. It can be used for uh, making the additional features or it can be used for the repairing purpose or you can go with the deposition of the new components with this kind of a process also. Some technological relevance, that is how which is uh, very much uh, close to the uh, welding process. How it is very much close to the welding process and all. If you see here, 
the either the photobed fusion process or direct energy fusion process or vam process the melting and solidification is very much uh, similar to a welding process and the what kind of the grains we are going to get in the case of the welding the cartic welding the solidification the rate of solidification is very very faster in welding as similarly even the dvd process and the anti manufacturing process the rate of solidification is very very fast in similar fashion we are going to have the the columnar dendritic structures in the anti manufacturing process whether it may be in the powder blown technology or maybe in the powder bed fit technology and all. and in the case of the selective laser melting process this is called the powder bed fusion at manufacturing process this powder bed fusion process is the accepted ASTM term for the at manufacturing process where the point of heat source selectively fuses and melts the region of a powder bed means in this powder is laid down onto the build platform area this is the hopper the delivery system and this is the build platform area where the powder is taken from the roller or from the duct straight which is going to spread the entire powders on the build platform area that is required for the fabrication and where the laser is controlled by our the 3d the cad file steel file and then it is going to be directed from that the process wherever the melting or something is going to be taking place from that the layer of melting is taken place one layer of sintering or melting is taken place from the laser that much layer height is going to be going down by this the deposition or the the build plot the area then the second layer of the powders are going to be deposited or spread by this the roller then this process is repetitively takes place until the complete part is going to be fabricated and this process is the most frequently used for the biomedical applications and as well as for the aerospace applications because it is very fast and as well as uh, uh, getting very better accuracy in the process and it is the most promising technology for the aerospace and medical applications for orthopedics or dental applications or even the implants and in this we can able to fabricate the layer thickness between 0.02 mm to 0.1 mm and all the laser beam diameter we using 70 microns in this case of the powder bed vision process and the particles the powder particles we use are around 15 to 45 or 45 to 5 to 45 microns of the size of the powder particles this is the distribution range of the powder particles we use and as well as uh, in the case of the dvd or in the direct energy deposition process we use around 45 to 90 microns when some machines we use 45 to 110 microns like in the formal line or in the concept laser or in the beam technology we use the 45 to 90 microns of the powder sizes and all and if you see how this selective laser melting process works this is what we are having in our laboratory in our research this is the powder is spread from this roller this is the tungsten carbide roller and then in the laser is interacting with the powder bed it is going to melt or going to sinter the powders by how we are defined in the, the 3d cad format and all and this is repetitive takes place again the roller uh, repetitively put the new layer of the powders bedding onto the build plot for media and then that much depth is lowered by this the build plot for media this process completely repetition takes place and the component is going to be fabricated this is how the process works in the slm process you can see some of the examples which are possible structures which are made by this slm process from our own laboratories with the struts and some of the rocket engine this was from the slm solutions and the knee implants and as well as some of the the ceramic parts which are fabricated and the with stainless steel or with aluminium we have fabricated some of the, the crowns and as well as with the different complexes how we can able to fabricate with the different insulation angles without the supporting structures also we have shown here 
and with respect to the this uh, rocket engine or the SLM process of the eyelets is it is very simplified manufacturing process. The minimal post processing is required in case of the the inconel materials of a complex structures. It will avoid the tooling wear when the processing is difficult to machine this super based alloys, nickel based alloys and all. And the innovation is the direct integration of the multiple parts and the internal features as a single component with the internal ducts and all. The improved functionality that is the cooling due to the innovation data structures, which is also increases the stability of the component and all. And the efficiency that is the minimization of the individual process steps while combining with multiple individual parts into a single components that will increase the, the stability and minimizes the production time from months to days and all. And lightweight construction. There is a lot of considerable weight can be reduced due to this the porous or lattice structures and all. And if you see the market scenario of AM, if you see in the figure here, AM market size, which is forecasted for from 2013 to 2023 from the owners association. You can see when it is started initially, it was 3 billion US dollar. And then now the forecast was for 23 is 30 billion US dollars. More than that, the industry is going. The requirement in the medical, uh, uh, the aerospace, automobile, even in the commercial applications, the AM is requiring everywhere the market size is growing day to day and up. And even if you see the material usage in the Boeing aircraft, we use around 70% of aluminum and remaining we use titanium, stainless steel and as well as composite and other materials. The entire material cost and as well as the, the weight of the components can be reduced by this kind of the IT manufacturing process can minimize the weight and as well as improve its performance center with the help of this, the degree printing process. And if you see the market situation and the competitive scenario of this manufacturing process, where are the leading sector in aerospace and as well as the healthcare applications? And even with the other applications, you can see the G aviation engine components and as well as the heat processes, all these major applications in aerospace and healthcare. If you see the machines, the manufacturers in the worldwide from Europe and Asia and as well as US. Many of the light manufacturing machines are come out from this Europe. The concept plays are SLM Solution, Arcam, Renisha, EOS. They are all the AM manufacturers, especially the metal AM manufacturers. Even the X1, the Bindjet manufacturers and all, the Phoenix systems, and as well as Trump Laser, and as well as this uh, GE and all, and Renisha and all. And if you see the main EM system developers will be in the European Union and uh, the merging and acquisition involving the big groups like Concept Laser, Arcam is approved by the GE and all. And the many the actors have impressive growth rates in this 3D system is 52% and the Arcam is the 43%. The technological competition mainly involves inline monitoring and quality control. Means the Improvements or developments are required in this uh, the inline monitoring are with the, the quality aspects and all in the case of the, the 3D printing developments and all. And if you see, whenever we are talking about the 3D printing, either uh, the metallurgy manufacturing process, like DD process or motorbed fusion process. There are a lot of the challenges, they are, we can say, the, uh, the barriers of this industrial barriers. And all. If you see here uh, the, the barriers, the major barrier is the stability and as well as repeatability. The components which are manufactured by this at manufacturing process, there are a lot of the industrial barriers. Are there. Like repeatability is major issue and as well as stability. To have a breakthrough in these things, a lot of research uh, the developments are required to understand the 
the the constraints are various with respect to these kind of the theory building process and all. If you see the geometrical defects may be there, residual stresses may be there, porosities, and as well as the impurities and contaminations. You can see the uh, geometrical defects in terms of the layer depositions, either maybe one surface is very high compared to the other surface because of the improper solidification and cooling and all, and the residual stresses because of the repetitive melting and the porosities and as well as the impurities some contamination of the foreign particles and the porosity is very common in the safety manufacturing process to avoid or to neglect uh, the porosity is very difficult here the defective rate is uh, more than five percent you are getting five to thirty percent of the defective rate but the commercially are uh, today it is difficult to accept this kind of the defective rate. We need to have very, very less defective rate even in the uh, aerospace or even in the healthcare application because the stringent quality requirements are there. That's why uh, it is very much required. It cannot be acceptable in the requirement. And in today, there is no commercial system which is available to automatically detect the uh, defects during the process itself. That is what the developments are required in these aspects of them. And if you see with respect to the process map, select laser melting of the titanium alloys. So you see in the graph and as well in the right hand side, the SCM images are reported here. We are having the process window is required for whatever may be the material, so either aluminum or stainless steel or maybe the titanium materials. We need to have the process window. The process window means the process parameters to have the proper energy density to, to melt and solidify the materials. See the uh, zone one to zone three and as well as the melting zone. If you either go with the laser's power or with the scan speed, may be overheating, or it may be insufficient melting, or it may be the creating some the serious the surface deformations will affect the jam recorders or the rollers or the blades. These kind of the defects are going to be occur if you are not optimizing the process parameter to melt the materials. And the other, uh, the processing issues are the material issues, the like feature size, the surface mesh and the geometric scaling and all. We assume that the each layer is in this fashion. The, whatever the layer we define, either 40 micron or the 20 micron or the 10 micron, the layer, right? It will be having this fashion. This kind of the stair stuffing effect will be there, non flattened layer edges will be there. It is having very rough surface finish. The actual surface finish of the metal is like this, but we are, we are assuming this. The actually will be having this kind of the metal surface because there might be some chance of unmelted particles, partially melted particles which are stick to the, the each layer. Center. This will be accumulating and it may affect the overall geometrical defects. These things can be minimized, the stair casing effect, stair stepping effect, and this kind of the defects are coming from this, the aspartic and all. Yes, it can be minimized, but the we have to reduce the layer thickness. Means number of layers are going to be increased more and it will reduce the less layer thickness. This means it takes too much time, longer build time because of the layer thickness, which will dictate the division of the entire part into a number of layers. And the other barriers are the build chamber atmosphere. It will strongly affect the chemistry processability and as well as the, the heat transfer. Like the majorly, what kind of the process uh, chamber is required? Is that for the SLM process or for the DD process or for the EBM process? See, we need to have the inert gas or vacuum systems typically which is required for the 
EBM process as well as for the SLM process. This, most of the metal powders having this tendency to oxidize and collect the moisture from the exposed area, especially the titanium, is very much exposed to oxidizing materials going to create the titanium oxide. Even in the DED, we are going with inert gas, which is used as a shielding gas flow over the melt surface to avoid this, uh, the oxidation or creating the defects. Even SLM typically operates in an inert environmental conditions, either in the argon or helium or even in the nitrogen. Even EVM process we use the vacuum chamber that is the heated filament, which is going to use to generate the electrons. It requires for this uh, a vacuum capable chamber to operate the electron beam melting rate manufacturing machines, which is going to maintain around uh, 10 power minus 2 megapascal, less than 5 to chamber pressure. And the column pressure we are maintaining uh, 5 to 10 power minus 4 pascals of the column pressure. The, this kind of the electron beam rate manufacturing process. And the other barrier is feedstock quality and as well as the powder quality and the powder characteristics and powder quality. If you talk about the feed quality, whether we are feeding the uh, in the form of a wire or in the form of a ribbon or in the form of a powder, and how we are feeding the powders, the DD system, whether we are injecting by the additional lateral injecting nozzles or with the radially cemented nozzles, or it may be with the, the coaxial nozzles. These are all going to affect the, the quality of the components, quality of the final part, and as well as the powder or the material feedstock when it is introducing between the energy sources. Because when the melting is taking place, how the melting is taking place from this the feedstock. That is, as well as the quality of powder is going to be determined by the size, shape, and as well as morphology and composition of the and how much amount of the internal porosities which is existing in the powder section. This will directly relate the quality of the component which is manufactured by the AM process. If you see the powder quality, you can see here the powders which is very rough surface with satellites and all, and having some internal porosities. This is the magnified views in the cross section and the internal use of this powder porosities. The powder surface is finished, but some elongated, irregular the shapes of the powders are there, and also the porosities are there. And powders are very spherical, very, very smooth surface finish, and there is no porosities. Mm. The quality of the powder is directly related to the production techniques. Mm. That is how it is manufactured. The powders also we are going to manufacture with the atomization process, whether it is gas atomization, rotary atomization, plasma rotating electro atomization process, or any plasma atomization process, or even with the other kind of the, the power production process. Means for VAM, is already a developed system survey because we are using a welding wires, either the TIG wires or the MIG wires. Because of that, we are going to have very, very minimal defects when you compare with the the powder bed rate manufacturing technology center because wire making is already standardized you can use the transferable from the already matured welding consumable supply chain center and the other challenges like the am process requires high quality of powder no contamination nearly no moisture in the powder contaminations size of the particles that is we have to use 5 to 45 for SLM, that is powder bed fusion, and 45 to 90 or 110 microns for the DD systems. The shape of the powder particles should be very spherical powder particles are required because flowability is very, very important. That if it is sphericity and the powder size distribution gives us what kind of flowability and as well as how much compressibility ratio and all in the powder bed fusion process and all. That will give us very good uh, quality of the layers, each layers, and there should be no mix of powder charges and as well as reuse of remaining powders. Means we need to go with the standard reusing of the remaining powders. We have to use one third of the reused powder with the origin powder when you are using a reused powder. The other aspect is the beam powder interaction. 
is how this the electron beam of the laser beam which is interacting with the powder cylinder. In the interaction of the heat source with the feedstock or with the melt pool impacts the utilization of the energy and can lead to the liquid metal ejection and as well as post. There are four basic modes of the particle ejection during the beam melting processes. Either maybe the convective transport of the liquid, that is the spatter ejection, or it may be the electrostatic repulsion of the powder particles, especially in the EBM and R. And it may be the kinetic recalling of the powder in the DED, and as well as an acid convention of the powder in the gas chamber. These kind of the powder interaction takes place in the four basic modes. If you see here, it is very complex when the laser metal interaction is taking place. It's very important for us to know how the laser it is imparting the energy transferring from the laser to the melt that is in the port particles to melt the port particles. It may sometimes it may reflect back the ports before it is input into the substrate. Or it may be the, the ejected from the melt pool. It may be scattered because of the laser beam on down. It can be, or it may be the reflected, may be scattered from the incoming powder. It may be like melt pool, uh, bowl formation, or bar formation. And some of the fewer particles are ejected from the melt pool. These kind of the uh, difficult, complex constraints are there in the electron beam or laser beam interacting with the powder. Cell. If the particles are melted and may be deposited on the substrate, what if the particles are melted in the multiple itself? And as well as maybe a combination of both, and what percentage of input particles goes into the fabrication? I mean, we assume that in the DVD systems, we are supplying 100% of the powder feeding takes place, but melting and solidification takes place only the part to 60% of the melting and solidifications. We may not melt 100% of the, the powders which are supplied from this the feeding nozzles because the loss of powder particles are which is emerging from because of the spattering or rejecting from the vent only 5 to 60 percentage melting efficiency is there in the DAD system. In terms of another barriers or defects, you can see the porosity. It may be if the porosity is very, very common tendency or common defects in the CM parts, it will negatively affect the, the mechanical parts properties, properties of the components which are fabricated by AM. These kind of porosities may be process induced, these kind of lack of fusions, irregular porosities, these are all the lack of fusions, which is the process induced and very spherical porosities are the gas porosities, these are all the gas induced porosities, it may be inside the port itself or it may be the, during the melting and solidification, it may create these kinds of them gas in these quantities. We need to optimize the process parameters that must properly tune to avoid range of mechanisms that can create the pores. With optimized melting parameters, the process in these porosities can be minimized as much as low in DED or SLM or in EBM less than 1%. But still there is a challenge in controlling this gas induced porosity center. The other barriers are the scan strategies. There are n number of scan strategies we are using with the light manufacturing process, depending on what kind of component we fabricate. Whether it is simple, cubic, or rectangular, or it may be cylindrical, or it may be hollow structures. We have to follow with the different uh, the scan patterns, unidirectional, bidirectional, and uh, island scanning, spot melting, uh, as well as the different uh, snake filling patterns, chessboard, sequential, random, concentric, linear, zigzag, 45 degree orientation. N number of, even we can define our own uh, the scanning strategies, whether it may be in and out, out and in, these kind of strategies. That will directly affect the quality of components which are fabricated. It means we have to go with random selection of the process strategies depending on the part geometry and as well as trial and error implementations. The other is uh, tracking and delaminations. 
these kind of the cracks which are formed, these kind of the defects, it is essentially depend on the process parameters. And as well as cracking of this microstructure may occur due to the solidification or it may be the subsequent heating and cooling. And it may create some of the macroscopic cracks. It may be related to other kind of defects like the porosity and all. And solidification cracks may occur for some materials if we are supplying too much of energy, which is applied to melt the materials, which will arise some kind of stresses, residual stresses, which is induced between the solidified or remelted areas and all. That is yet to solidify and all. In such cases, we are going to have this kind of the the cracks in the solidified components or fabricated components. And the other one is delamination. You can see the layer delamination takes place because this kind of the delamination is because of the separation of the adjacent layer with respect to the previous deposited layers because of the incomplete melting of these layers. This may occur due to incomplete melting of the powder or insufficient uh, remelting uh, takes place in the uh, solid uh, conditions. These kind of uh, things, defects will be there when the melt ball formation. This melt ball formation is because of the scan speed and as well as the laser power. If you are not optimizing the proper scan speed and laser power, these kind of defects are going to occur. The balling defects and as well as with the higher scan speed, we are going to have these kind of defects. You see, to have the stable track, we need to optimize uh, the laser power and as well as scan speed. If you go with very high scan speed, it may be humping or maybe balling effects are going to be there. Even with the low laser power on that. That one has to optimize or adjust the laser scan and as well as scan speed. The another is the residual stresses. The which is the most common in all the metallurgy manufacturing components are all due to large thermal gradients due to the during the processing and as well as it can negatively impact the mechanical properties and as well as act as a driving force for the changes in the grain structures. If this stresses exceeds the local yield stresses of the materials, the wrapping may take place or it may be the plastic deformation may also going to occur in the components. In the if these uh, residual stresses exceed the local ultimate tensile strength of the materials, then it may create the cracking or other kind of defects may occur in the components. Some kind of macroscopic stresses have dramatical effect on the bulk behavior of the materials. It means it will deform the, the shape of the components even after the fabrications. Some micro residual stresses like it will be in the precipitates in the atomic uh, dislocations will going to be taking place in the localized area. You see the macroscopic stresses how it will affect the, the printed compound. These are all the uh, defects. Uh, deformation has been taken place in this uh, top surface and all these kind of uh, defects are going to be created because of the residual stresses. Just some uh, brief comparison with respect to the DMD and SLM powder bed fusion and direct uh, powder feeding technology. The part dimensions is limited by the handling systems in the uh, laser metal deposition systems or in the DMD systems, but uh, it is limited by the chamber in the SLM systems. Part complexity is uh, limited, but there is no limited in the part complex in the SLM systems. And in the both the machines, we are getting the, the Accuracy is good, dimensional accuracy, and the build rate is uh, very good in uh, DMD and all compared to the SLM process. Any uh, surfaces, uh, 3D surfaces can be edited, repaired, or can be added features on any existing parts with the DMD. But we have to go with only flat surface for the SLM process. Roughness, we are getting 52 period microns. And for we are getting better surface finish, it is 5 to 10 to 50 microns. And layer thickness we can get depending on what kind of laser diameters we use and all in both systems. And some of the practical case studies I'm going to discuss in the DMD process and all with our own expertise, with our own experience with these uh, systems. Here in the DMD or in the direct the laser and the portion systems. The relationship between these process parameters, thermal history, 
microstructure and what kind of process operations are required to meet the stringent industrial parts and all. It is very much required. Because the, how the laser based uh, powder bed system, whether it may be laser power or laser, the powder feed rate, how the transfer speed, the scanning speed, and the build directions, scan patterns, and hatch, hatch uh, strategies, the layer thickness. And all the, the process controllable factors and the thermal history is uncontrollable and able to control with the, the process parameters, the peak temperature, melt profile, cooling rates, as well as the fusion solidification and all. This will directly relate the, the surface texture, the microstructure, porosity, residual stresses and as well as the deformation. And then we need to, after the fabrication of near net components, we need to go for the post-processing of this. It may be shipping, heat treatment, laser cladding, laser polishing. And depending on what kind of uh, the requirement, we have to go for the fit for service properties. You can see one example is air duct. This was the air duct which was fabricated by from our own laboratory from Central North, uh, France where I have worked in this uh, concept laser, high repo laser, DD systems. This was the beam technology. We have fabricated some prototypes and as well as application components this, uh, with the stainless steel materials. You can see we are defining n number of layers with the different scans where the laser port for fabrication of the components. Means we are using these are all the process conditions to fabricate the components. You can see how this uh, the uh, build direction, what kind of the surface roughness we are having and what is the surface profile to build the field. You can see in the exaggerated view, there are all the unmelted powder particles are sticking onto the each layers. And even in the top surface, you can see this kind of the balling effects because at uh, scan speed is very, very high, 1300 scan speed. In such cases, we are going to have this kind of the balling effects. And if you see, if you are not, properly optimizing the process window, this kind of the ripple and wavy surface we are going to occur in the a part geometry with the stitched a number of layers. You can see this is the 3D profile. How the each layer wetting angle is going to directly let the solid wall. On this rough surface, the contact angle changes constantly from layer to layer, which is affects the wettability or the spread of the deposited metal and as well as the wall thickness changes and irregularly wall is expected. You can see these kind of the wall irregular layers are going to be expected. If you're not uh, optimizing the process window or uh, controlling the feedback signals of the mat in the each layers. We assume that the layer is uniform, but it may be of these kind of variations in the after distance. The area which we are having uh, the good uh, to prevent for the manufacturing of the good manufacturing it may be the the valley at the peaks in such cases if you exactly see these things these kind of variations will be there that is going to affect this the offset distance where the point of focal point where the laser and the code is interacting that may vary because of these kind of the defects that will definitely it will affect the part quality and as well as metabolic characteristics and if you see we have done some analysis in terms of mechanical and as well as microstructural analysis. We have correlated how this layer melting is taking place and demelting is taking place and formation of this uh, the stairs check for the rippled walls <coughs> from the end layers. You can see that this is the solidification tracks of the each layer and uh, schematically it uses the, the bands of the solidification profiles and that. And how we can see the microstructure in the mid section and as well in the top section, the gives us the in details of the, the columnar dendritic structure growing towards the, the build rate or the build direction. And inside each the dramatic the columnar structures we are having a, the cellular dendritic structures which is even at the bottom as well as in the individual the cells and all equates to the, the cellular structures and all. 
and some of the facts and challenges with respect to this edge manufacturing is the edge manufacturing akin to fusion welding to, in many aspects uh, bring into the action like uh, the heat transfer the fluid dynamics and the container mechanics how melting takes place solidification and how much uh, uh, solid state transformation takes place for the grain growth and diffusion of the protection and all there are many process variables which relates the the energy density that is laser power travel speed feed rate and as well as feed stock that is wire we are using ribbon we are using powder we are using this will relate the uh, the complexity of the fabrication uh, okay because of these things there are a lot of difficulties challenges in this edge manufacturing systems as well as in the deposition characteristics and as well as dimensions and the shape changes you can see these kind of the the solidification tracks and the inverted the solidification tracks one is convex and the concave tracks are going to get it because of variations in the energy density so that may be higher energy density or low energy density these kind of the the irregular the fusion tracks are going to <coughs> and uh, balling effect because of the length to diameter ratio of the beads puckering effect may going to occur in case of the welding and all similarly these kind of balling effects are going to occur because of the very the, the deposition speed and you see the 1200 mm per minute where having these kind of the balling effects this is because of the instability in the melt pool profiles this because of the non wetting the hydrodynamic instability because of creating some maragoni effects and uh, splashing of the melt pools differs at the higher surface temperature and as does well the turbulent uh, solid liquid interfaces and because of these things uh, the balling effects are going to occur the <coughs> l by d ratio is greater than 5 by 2 then there will be no balling effect going to occur at all and some of the positive skewed particles distribution containing high fraction of smaller particles which is resulting in a smoother contour of the melt pool than the negatively skewed one containing higher fraction of larger particles even the formation of this balling uh, defects initiate the formation of voids at the center of the molten pool as the voids is going to be expanding the molten pool breaks and it going to create the uh, non continuous beads like a separate islands are going to create it even the faster speed and as well as lower laser power can create the increase in the likeliness of the forming the balling defects these kind of the defects are going to create and if you see how the welding is related to the manufacturing process the microstructure the constraints of the super cooling with the low g by r a ratio that is the, the thermal gradients and the cool uh, solidification rates and that <coughs> if you see uh, the solidification takes place from the outward to the inward the same fashion in the it manufacturer components uh, towards this build direction the solidification takes place from the out to the inner <coughs> and at the center we are having the equaxed uh, the cellular structures you can see this is the dendritic cellular structures in the each column or grain and all <coughs> these kind of the uh, structures we are going to get it in the they very much similar to the welding in the it manufacturer components and all. and how we can able to control the grain structure by the deposition rates means we can control the amount of the powder feeding systems and as well as the by changing the laser power and as well as the scan speeds and you can see if you vary the area of fraction with respect to the deposition rates and even you can control the equax grains by controlling the energy density and as well as the cooling rate and even if you we have measured the hardness properties hardness is almost same throughout the fabricated component but there are some voids are there less than 5 microns and all. these are all the the voids that can say the porosities and all this is the phase diagram which is going to give us how much percentage of the austenitic uh, phase existing in this stainless steel 316 fabricated components and all. and we also said the surface topographical aspects in the fabricated components if you see this is the uh, the components of air duct the surface structure shows of how much uh, surface roughness it is having in the external surface and as well as in the internal surface roughness 
but to minimize this rough surface we have gone with a laser polishing that can minimize if you see the before polishing and after polishing how much minimization can be done with the laser imaging at all. The post processing is required to minimize the very rough surfaces and it is maybe required like post treatment partial necessary especially in the case of the inspection like penetrate testing and all and mechanical are like uh, the chemical milling might be applied to, to minimize this rough surface and all and for high load parts uh, we have to go with the tipping process which is a very mandatory used to eliminate the pores and as well as remove the defects that is the nitrides oxides and other carbides and to dramatically decrease the increase the material properties and all and if you see some ebs cm this is shows us the the grain orientation and as well as the grain structure grain sizes and all with the build direction and as well as in the horizontal direction if you see this is the build direction this is with respect to horizontal direction and what is the grain orientation whether it will be in the 111 plane or 001 plane or 101 plane in the fabricated conditions and all and we have compared with the mechanical properties with respect to the rot alloys and as well as the manufactured components with the 3 and like steel 316 material See the elongation properties uh, of rot alloy is much much better than the light manufacturing components because of the these kind of the defects, porosities or lack of regions, unmelted cold particles are stuck into the layers and all. This will be causing for the reduction in the elongation properties. But if you see the uh, the uh, tensile strength is up to the even more than that the rot alloys were getting tensile properties, but in terms of the, the ductlet is very less in case of light manufactured compounds you know, because of this kind of different chamber. And we have used for some repairing applications like some inconel with uh, monel materials and all because of wider application in oil and uh, gas industries and aerospace industries and all. We have made uh, so much of a comparative study with uh, the first thing, uh, additional layers for the repairing applications. How much, uh, what will be the bonded structures between the substrate and the added layers? And you can see how the grain orientation takes place was analyzed with the EBSC analysis uh, from the base materials in the, in the transition zone. And the, <coughs> the micronus variation was done from the base material to the transition zone. How the heat affected zone which is affecting the deposited in Kunal materials, you see in the transition zone, there is a decrease in the hardness properties because the uh, reduction in the hardness will be taking place, no touch in the 100 hundred hardness in the heat affected zone and all. Even with uh, different materials, uh, there is an increase in the hardness properties at the interface zones. Even the uh, chromium materials, 74 CS steels, even 25 chrome materials. In the transition zone, how this, uh, the hardness properties and as well as the the grain orientations takes place in the uh, different uh, <coughs> repairing applications of the stainless steel materials. Even how we have to monitor to get back the feedback signals to coincidence uh, how much temperature, how much width, and how much bit of the layer has to be taking place if it is a very non regular bit syndrome. Because we have to optimize the laser power or with the energy density if you see one kilowatt 1.5 to you can see this three uh, representation takes how much layer width and height has been each day for example the 75 layers was deposited for example one kilowatt we are having 31 millimeters of height with the width of 1.94 and for 1.5 we are having 30 millimeters 2.13 of width of the layer and for 2 kilowatt, we are having 28.35 with 2.5. Means the height is decreasing and width is increasing as we are supplying more amount of the energy density. Because if we are not optimizing the energy density to get the required layer width and height, then it definitely it will affect the geometrical defects. We have to control the surface waviness and as well as wetting angle, which will controls the deposition width and height and as well as accumulation of heat. Means the heat energy which is supplied should be melt the amount of the materials, how much quantity of material is to be melted, that has to be 
optimize even with the numerical simulations or with the very so many trial and error experimentations that will control the, the these kind of the defects and all. And if you see other uh, the dimensional errors we have got in the fabrication process with the different uh, the laser powers, you can see elongated columnar gaze can be visualized. This kind of uh, convex, concave, and this kind of the multiple profiles are getting because of the shift in the orientation of the planes, and uh, even with the bottom structures, because the energy density which is not sufficient to melt or remelt the previous two. Because of that, we are going to have these kind of uh, geometrical defects as well as metastructural defects. And we have addressed one more simple problem of serial components with the different uh, strategies linear, bidirectional, zigzag, circular, and as well as concept and spiral. See, these kind of strategies we have hatching strategies to fabricate the cylindrical components. You can see the geometrical defects you can able to see one well, maybe more uh, and as well as high center. And as the defects you can see, this is how what kind of the defects, lack of fusions in the fabricated component, and how much porosity can be minimized. You can see you can able to fabricate efficient components with geometrical control and as well as the in terms of porosity defects. Only with the constraints of the trajectory movement of the heads and as well as the, the fabrication strategies efficiently able to fabricate this kind of components. And some of the other uh, case studies we have worked with uh, titanium materials. This is the photos we have used, automized gas atomized models. This is the chemical composition with the DAX analysis. And the uh, surface topography, how much uh, the maximum surface roughness we can able to produce with the optimized process parameter, we can produce when with uh, 20 to 30 microns of the surface roughness we can able to produce with the optimized process parameters. You can see this is a exaggerated view of the surface uh, topography of the titanium components. This will give us the uh, overall view of the macro structure of the components, how the columnar grains are towards the build direction and as well as in the edges. And if you see the cross-sectional micrograph of the magnified view of this uh, titanium, which is consisting of uh, alpha plus beta grains, and beta is at the uh, grain boundaries and alpha columnar structures, uh, uh, and as well as beta transform grains are visible in this uh, uh, the microstructure and all, which is almost similar to that of the, uh, the raw alloys of the titanium and all, can able to get in the titanium eight manufacturing samples and all. When we have measured the microness properties compared with the uh, the eight manufactured with the raw alloys and as well as stress relieved, can get with the stress relieving, we can get better hardness properties and minimize the porosities and all. And we have tested the different uh, mechanical properties, either like tensile, Freddy, crap propagation testing, the different orientation, how it can be having a only it manufactured components, repaired components, and as well as the different inclination angles, which is one side repaired or two side repaired. And all these, if you see the tensile results, the strength is very, very good. The ultimate uh, tensile properties, hill strength are very good compared to the rot alloys and all. But only we are getting less elongation properties, the tactile properties, because of the, the porosities are defects. You can see these kind of uh, porosities are defects are there. This kind of lack of regions in the. And if you see the rot alloys uh, having the, the better ductile properties and all in this uh, kind of uh, E, if you see, it is uh, the rod specimen. Because of that, uh, there is a lot of variations in the. the ductile ruptures and all in the fabricate. Here you can see uh, in this uh, figure, see if you see, it is kind of both the ductile and as well as the brittle nature is there in the fractured samples. Because of this, uh, we're having a production in the bacteria. And we have measured the flow cycle fatigue properties, <coughs> which is up to the mark of the raw alloys and all, uh, of the fabricated samples with the different directions and all, and as well as crop propagation testing with the and tensile testing. Uh, the raw alloys and even more than that, uh, the crab fabrication properties we are getting because the tensile properties, ultimate tensile strength is more than that of that. The raw alloys, because of that, we are getting good uh, fatigue properties, uh, the crab fabrication properties in the IT manufacture titanium samples compared with the raw alloys. 
and so of the the functional graded materials we are fabricated from oil and uh, other industries oil and gas industry these are all the functional graded uh, parts which are fabricated and uh, with respect to the final view or conclusion with respect to this uh, fine tuning of energy for genetic crack free functionality surface with the little or no dilution from the base materials is required even some of the embedded pore particles on the last deposited layers that can be minimized by controlling the process window and all and uh, particle free uh, lower deposits indicate their complete melting and some oxide traces will be there and some challenges and future developments is uh, like online monitoring in situ sensors are required integration of synchronization of the image acquisition system to the machine controllers and all and even the big data stream management is required for continuous process monitoring and all and some studies are required on the multi sensor data fusion methods to enhance the process monitoring performance and all. even the like some modifications in the uh, the deposition heads the coaxial or affixed sensor system and evaluation of in situ uh, sensing solutions during the fabrication itself these things are uh, some challenges with respect to future directions and uh, thank for the organizers and as well as uh, the university and as well as the coordinators of this uh, fdp program If there are any queries i'm happy to address and apart from this we have worked with uh, other vam process just to show you these are the applications we have fabricated in terms of metallurgy manufacturing process impellers the turbochargers implants gas turbine blades injectors with very thin walls all you know, the components we have fabricated with the, even with the vam process we have fabricated some of the <coughs> the uh, components and all you see here uh, these are the components we have fabricated with the vam process and all with wire arcade manufacturing the aluminum some of the aerospace brackets which are manufactured with the vam process and all okay i will uh, stop at here and if you have any question and this is the new era of uh, the lt manufacturing process you can just look into it this uh, frictions the lt manufacturing process means this will be like new uh, majorly for the bigger applications and accuracies there will be no melting and no binders are required there is no laser or no centering is required and there is no uh, the pressing uh, there is no limitations also you can see this much wider uh, bigger uh, the components uh, can be cylindrical components can be printed with this friction steel editing manufacturing process this was the weld having this kind of pattern weld editing manufacturing process this is the new era for the manufacturing and can say the new feature is there because of that uh, the bigger better as well as faster production rates and even the whatever our own material choices are also possible with that okay i'll stop at here if you have any queries or any doubts or if you anything interact with me i'm happy to interact with you to address your queries thank you for the audience and as well as for the university for giving me opportunity to deliver my research talk on this at uh, man factor thank you dr manjaya for such an i think uh, informative and interesting uh, you know uh, session and i have a question that is yes. uh, uh, uh i mean how much of 3d printing is being used in our indian industries nowadays sir in indian industries uh, but as per application wise we are limited but uh, nowadays uh, so many industries are started for the uh, initial applications as you know we are having very we are all importing the machines but very recently intech dmls uh, and as well as uh, with uh, ji has started even uh, wipro 3d they have started with the polymer machines and all but now with respect to metal intact dmls they have indigenous uh, development has been taken place with this uh, metal it manufacturing core bed fusion process but uh, with you might be knowing that uh, incredible 3d and as well as uh, imp they have making of this medical implants especially yes, this yes, right implants there. or some of the bone yeah. implants in medical aspects we are better compared to other uh, countries but in aerospace and automobile we are not much uh, 
developments has been taken place now hcl and drd were trying to more adaptation of these things but as per this uh, azad ki make in india program yeah okay thank you any other question from anyone anyone yes uh, hello good afternoon sir yeah uh, yes sir that uh, last slide you are showing that that one process that are uh, all are in your uh, nit lab or that you collaborate with some uh, no, actually it is not from nit varangal where i was doing my postdoctoral studies in france na right? university okay. of the central land there i have worked at okay. now we so, have started with some building small walls and all in our lamp process we are having this cold metal transfer lamp process with uh, five axis robot we are working for that okay sir so i have also few questions yeah. regarding that if we, uh, whenever the additive manufacturing is taken place that time if some suppose one layer by the way if, if any meshing or sometime it's uh, maybe stopped that time is, is it any process to that recover that process or it detect that process uh, i mean that uh, if um, that time it will after a few time it will works properly so that portion it, it is uh, not filling over that so is there any uh, process to detect that uh, yeah there are so many errors may come because of the during the fabrication and because of the like layer errors may come because sometimes the roller based truck during the operation or uh, sometimes the laser may stop working and how much layer we have stopped we don't know some kind of feedback signals are required nowadays uh, you might be know dmd the concept lasers these uh, kind of manufacturers they have started with some uh, the camera in situ analysis camera that will give some feedback signals to the system and the, the operator can help to help uh, to continue the process these kind of errors are there even some monitoring of the temperature distribution and how much heat accumulation takes place it will sense the feedbacks like control the layer thickness and as well as how much heat input has to deliver for the melting of the materials these kind of recent developments has been taken place very recently but still commercialization has been done there even no indian machines are available in in india so no such kind of online monitoring signals are not okay sir sir and also we have learned about so many defects in that uh, webinar so is there any what are uh, what is the useful process that defect um, to defect those uh, defects i mean any there is any See, majorly any... we are having porosity is major defects yeah porosity can be minimized even less than 1 percentage if you optimize the process parameters if you fine tune the laser energy density we can able to minimize and another thing we have to go for heaping hot isostatic pressing that will enhance this mechanical properties and as well as minimizes these kind of porosities but uh, we cannot negligently fully remove this porosity is not possible but some kind of gas porosities will be there even as we like casting we are having some kind of porosities we are having that uh, defects depending on requirements we have to make use of this process okay sir yeah. thank you thank you thank very you, much you. you have so much insightful that deliberation it is so much learning thing and also one question from our uh, participant that is pritish sharkar he wants to ask sir is it uh, possible to use two different materials for extrusion in a single fdm machine yes yes we can use for these things okay Uh, and i think in one more question inquiry they have put, uh, they put uh, uh, is it possible to use two different materials for extrusion in the single fdm machine yes it is possible if you are having a, a twin feeding nozzles then you can definitely use uh, you can go with the uh, different materials one with one with polymer and one with the biodegradable polymers with abs plastics or with pla these kind of uh, twin uh, feeding nozzles are available you can go with that fda machine sir to make some uh, the bimetallics or functional grade materials gradient variations of the compositions can be built with that kind of uh, the twin nozzles 
Okay, sir. And sir, what about that uh, commercial aspect that in additive manufacturing, uh, uh, that what are the issues for that uh, commercial issues for this uh, process additive manufacturing? Practical users are, I could not. Uh, what is that? Um, I mean, that uh, how it is, uh, it is then commercial. I mean, it is very um, Costly yeah. in the commercialization case. is in terms of uh, medical aspects, definitely there is a lot of scope. And even in automobile, for some specific applications, we cannot make it like uh, the, the welding we are using for uh, some of the sheet structures and all. But in the sheets, the body of the automobile can be manufactured with VAM process. When the commercialization takes place, means it has to come down the cost. Now the cost of production is high with this uh, process and all. When it is come down, when it is commercialization, it takes place. And then we can make use of these kind of even the high-end cars like the Porsche cars or the F1 race cars. They are making with this the piston rod or the engine or the heads of the piston heads, even in the body. And even with polymer printing, they are going with steering and the body of the structures and all. That will minimize the cost. But they are thinking of only in high-end application. But to make it to a the our automobile scale applications, it requires time to bring down the cost of manufacturing. Yes. But in missile application, aerospace, spacecraft, medical, people are using. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So there are no more any more questions from anyone? One more question. Okay. So there from is no open British question. Sarkar. Yeah. The Prithi's question has been answered. No, Anjan sir just quoted him. Uh, no, I think uh, one more question. One more question. Yeah, can you repeat yeah. the question? Sir, uh, it is written that, thank you, sir. And is it possible to reuse the waste part of the 3D printed object like PLA support structures? Yes, sir, it is possible, but only again we have to use that uh, the PLA waste uh, support structures and all again to we have to make it to F elements. Again, we have to go with the production of this filament wires, then we can feed into the system, then only we can able to use. But as far as in the metals, we have to go with uh, receiving and to sort out these partially minted particles, unmented particles, and then we have to mix a proper ratio of the original powders and as well as the re already reused powders. Sometimes it is required to go with uh, plasma automation also, to make it a very more spherical to improve the probability and all, especially in metals. But PLA and all is, as it is very uh, cheap products like. Uh, with less price, we can, with the 2000, we can get one coil of uh, PLA and all. That's why people are not much worried about uh, the reusing and all in this polymers and all. But in metals, people are worried to have the cost of production of the powders are very high. Sir, uh, in case of research purpose, we are, uh, PLA is uh, not in such case in that, uh, in case of any uh, research work in that PLA material. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, faculties are working on you know, research group PLA, ABS plastics, biodegradable polymers, and even some uh, biomedical uh, the, the materials, biopolymers and all. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any okay, other queries? Uh, okay. So anymore, uh, we have, so fine, we have no any more, we do not have any more open queries. So now I will ask uh, Amit Karmakar, assistant professor, Center for Robotics and 3D Printing, Macau WP, to give the vote of thanks and validate this session. Amit, over to you, Amit. Thank you, Shambhu, sir, for giving me opportunity to uh, give vote of thanks. On behalf of uh, Center of Robotics and 3D Printing, uh, I want to thank our honorable vice chancellor, sir, to um, who gave who uh, gave his vital time from his uh, extremely busy schedule uh, to grace this program. Further, I want to uh, want to thank our director of School of Engineering, Science and Technology, Professor Shivamai Dashgupta, sir, for uh, for his valuable note. 
I want to thank Dr. M. Manjaya sir uh, for sharing his deep insights in the field of 3D printing. Further, I want to thank Mr. Shambha Chatterjee for moderating the program smoothly. I also want to thank the webinar team for their support. Finally, last but not the least, the participants. I want to th thank the, all the participants who make the webinar a grand success. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, every, thank you everyone, for attending the seminar. Thank you, webinar team. Uh, Sambu, sir, mute yours. Uh...